¿Qué pasa con el microondas? No, no, no. Okay, <laughs> so my husband is like telling me that he's gonna make a lot of noise because he just really needs to cook while I film this video. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. If you're new to my channel, hi, hello, how are you? <laughs> How did you even find me? Um, but yeah, if you're new to my channel, I talk here about books. I mostly talk about science fiction books. Although today there's going to be kind of a mix between sci-fi and a lot of horror. I think like horror and sci-fi and just a lot. Because I went through my shelves and I pulled out all of my physical TBR books that I really want to finish in the year of 2022. Um, as you many of you know, I use Scribd and I use Audible and that's how I mostly consume books But I still do have books in my physical TBR that I would like to get through because I want to just finish them and then say that I read that I read them Another thing you should know about me is that I like to go to books not knowing a lot about what they're about I like to be surprised. I like I'm sorry, my face is itchy. I like to be surprised, I like not knowing, I like the the unknown. So if I tell you that I know I know next to nothing about a book, it's because I know next to nothing about a book. So let's get started. Now it just so happened that I picked these out and I put them on the top. This is in random order, um, but these are all comic books. And the first one I have here is Descender. And this is by Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nguyen. 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 Um, this is about a little robot that wakes up and he wants to find his human. But the thing is, I believe robots are outlawed in this new society and it's been like years, years since he, um, since he had a human. So I bought this with all the like, I want to read it now feels. And then I just never read comic books in 2021. So this is number one. We're not gonna count them. I'm, I just said that this is number one. Then we have another comic book. This is by Snyder, Jock, Nollingsworth, Robbins, and that's it. Those are the author. And this is Witches with a Y. Um, I believe this is about a family that comes to a small town and they're escaping trauma. I don't believe that, that's what it says in the back. Uh, but something is waiting for them in the woods, just beyond the town, watching from the trees, ancient and hungry. I cannot wait to read this. I must say the art style is a little bit too out there for me, but I cannot wait for to read this. And I've heard from some people that this is actually quite scary. So, you know, it's great that I have it so that I can read it because I love scary shit. And finally, speaking of scary shit, I put this in so many TBRs, it's kind of ridiculous. I have Through the Woods, stories by Emily Carroll. Um, this is just short stories, I believe, about the woods. <laughs> you know, and going through the woods. So that's it, that's all I know about it. That's all I want to know about it and I wanna read it in 2022 can't believe it's 2022 um you might see me do this in a vlog because there's three of them so you know i always like to do vlogs of three and i have them so i'm just gonna set them aside and pretend <laughs> that um i have no idea what i'm doing the next three that i have again collection of three is this book that i again put in so many tbrs which is other minds the octopus and the evolution of intelligent life by peter godfrey smith this is just a book about octopuses and how intelligent they are and how we underestimate them and how they learn and i love octopi octopuses it's not octopi it's octopuses and there is that um, TV show on Netflix called My Teacher the Octopus and I just I really want to get into the mood of reading nonfiction again. The next book that I have is Erebus by Michael Palin. This is the story of a ship that was lost at sea for 160 years. I think I said 600 at one point but it was lost at sea for 160 years and we want to dive into it and see where this book where this book has been why we couldn't find it and what happened to the people on board sounds incredible again 
I've got three non-fictions and then the next one is what a fish knows the inner lives of our underwater cousins now I always say this when I have when I pick up this book it's that I have thalassophobia which is fear of the ocean fear of fish etc so I've been doing a lot of reading on fish because it helps me understand them and understand that they're not evil sea creatures or they're not gonna hurt me and um, it's really helpful or it's been really helpful and I really want to learn what fish feel because there's this whole idea that fish don't feel pain or you know like that they don't have emotions like other animals like you show someone a video of an elephant and they're all like oh you show someone the video of a fish and they're like oh it's a fish you know so I want to I want to see them more as animals like the animals that they are than just things just so we're clear i have a lot more of books on my kindle and on my um audible and script tbr but these are just physical i'm just seeing like these three books it sounds like i only have three non-fiction that i want to read but there's a lot more it's just not featured in this video i started kill creek a long time ago and I couldn't get into it because of the blatant misogyny that is in this book it's really hard but I I am interested in the story and I do want to know what happens so I am begging um, audible Spain to have this so that I can listen to it and read it and say that I'm done with it or I'm just gonna have to push on and physically read it I am kind of far I am on page 110 so I want to get through this this is about a bunch of horror authors that get to spend a night in a haunted house and shit goes down sounds like fun except that the woman character is written so badly it almost hurts then we have war of AI by Ishan Pandey now this is about a man um, called Azarel uh, he's a mechanic from sector A17 and he's really not happy with Queen Andromeda which is the AI that controls all of humanity so he's really not happy about that but it seems that he's going to fight for the banner of humanity it sounds like an adventure sci-fi and it has images in it and I really want to read it I just never pick it up because I cannot find it in audio and you all know that I prefer to read my books in audio uh, but this was before I knew that and then I have this Neil Gaiman book which I have wanted to read oh my god that is really white <laughs> which I've wanted to read for a really long time it's the graveyard book by Neil Gaiman It's about a little boy that gets raised by ghosts sounds amazing i just really haven't gotten to it for some reason but this is the last neil gaiman book that i physically own that i haven't read and i don't know why i couldn't tell you why next up if you have seen my vlog on reading books science fiction books written by monica's which i will link up above and down below you have seen that I read the first of this series, which is called Bounders. Yeah, Bounders. And this is Bounders, The Tundra Trials. This is the book, the second book in the series, and I really want to read it. Yeah, and they don't have audiobooks, so, but they're very fast reads, and I really, really love them. So I'm very excited to read Bounders by Monica. What are, what are you? Monica Tesla. <laughs> I read by Monica and Lee Pierce. I also read Monica Byron and then Monica Tesla. This book hurts my heart. This book just hurts everything and any anything that I am about. Because this book, I want to read it. The thing is, everybody has told me that the audiobook is incredible. And it's not available in Spain. Anywhere. I've looked everywhere the rights are just not available in spain so i'm just i'm just gonna have to b bite the bullet and read it as a physical copy but oh i just really want to read the the audiobook why why do people do this why 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 not make it available in spain but anyway this is the silent companions by laura purcell this is about a recently widowed pregnant woman that goes to a house to live and there she finds little figurines that kind of look like her and yeah things get creepy 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 creepiness next up we have two anthologies now i have a lot more anthologies but these are the ones that i'm putting in my definitely want to be to read tbr for 
you know, 2022. The first one is Wasteland Stories of the Apocalypse featuring a bunch of authors, including Octavia E. Butler. And the next one is Taktumi, an anthology of Arctic horror stories. Now, these two sound incredible. All of them sound incredible, but I found out recently that I don't like short stories. So I just have a bunch of them up there and I don't like them. So, I mean, it's not that I don't like them. It's just that I prefer uh, a novel or something. But I'm going to read these because they sound pretty good. And that's the whole shebang. They sound good, okay? Here we have what you have been waiting for. If you've been waiting for some, um, um, what's it called? <laughs> I don't remember. Some science fiction reads. I have the drowned word by the drowned world by J D Ballard. J G, not J D, <laughs> by J G ba Ballard. Um, this is about basically climate change and a world that is drowned because we fucked up the climate. Like this is the premise of almost all every science fiction story, and um, I really want to read it. Still haven't found the audiobook, so I might just have to read the the thing with all of these books is that I don't have the audiobook like that is the theme that is going to run through all of this it's just that I don't have the audiobook and that is why I haven't read it so I might have to just bite the bullet and just read these freaking books in the original format next I have toxic I this is one of the last books I held last year I was very very sad and I bought books because you know shit happens so basically this is about a girl named hannah who isn't supposed to e exist she's been with her mother in a secret room of the bioship cyclo until the day her mother is simply gone and then fen is supposed to die he and the crew of mercy he and a crew of mercenaries are there to monitor cyclo as she expires the, the machine i think the the ship is kind of like kind of living and uh, the payment for the suicide mission will mean Fen's sister is able to live. But when he meets Hannah, he's not sure how to save them both. As Cyclo goes sick, sicker by the day, they unearth more secrets about the ship and the crew. But the more time they spend together, more the more Hannah and Fen realize that falling for each other is what ultimately could kill them both. Sounds fun. Sounds like a fun YA story. I mean, this is YA. I could probably get through it pretty fast, but um, if I find the audio, I'm gonna read the audio. Then we have this one that I started when uh, my depression got really bad, so I stopped reading it, and I, I'm looking forward to starting it again, and that is Monument 14 by Emmy Leiborn. Now, Monument 14 is about a school bus that is heading well to school, and suddenly, shit hits the fan there is um hail coming down destroying the bus it's so big it's like the size of basketballs there's snow coming and then there's this gas that kind of leaks out and makes you well that kills you basically and this bus driver is able to save a bunch of kids and they're stuck in this mall called monument 14 and um it's their story and oh it's got a map Oh yeah, it's got a map. So, yeah, I was really enjoying it. Um, it does read quite YA, but then again, it is a YA book, so I'm pretty sure that that's what it was meant to read as. So, yeah, I've got Monument 14 by um, Emmy LeBourne. Another one I have to read. <laughs> yeah. And I know there's no audio for that one because I looked for it. Then we have Tentacle by Rita Indiana, and I'm just gonna read this to you. Plucked from her life on the streets of post-apocalyptic Santo Domingo, young maid Asile Figueroa fi finds herself at the heart of a Santeria prophecy. Only she can travel back in time and save the ocean and humanity from disaster. But first she must become the man she always was with the help of a sacred anemone. Tentacle is an electric novel with a big appetite and a brave vision, plunging headfirst into questions of climate change, technology, Yoruba ritual, queer poli politics, poverty, sex, colonialism, and the temporary contemporary art. What else do I need to say? 
to get you to pick this up. What? Why haven't I picked this up? Because I've been reading audiobooks, basically. But um, I think this is going to be my new workbook. I'm just going to take it on the bus and just read it on the bus while I head to work. All right. I have one more sci-fi. I'm just going to take it out so that we can get through the sci-fi portion of this video. And that is I, Robot by Isaac Asimov. I read this when I was a really little girl. These are short stories about uh, robots and robots doing their things. Um, yeah. When I was too young and I don't remember a fucking thing about them so I think it's time that I revisit one of my classics and read Isaac Asimov's I Robot. I'm really excited for this one honestly. If you don't think I look excited it's because I'm tired and I'm taking meds that make me even more tired but I am actually really excited and also I also don't think I, I'm excited I'm as like woo happy because you know I see how many books I have to read. I think I counted them. There's 30. And of course I can read 30 books in a year. Well, I mean, of, of course. But just thinking that none of these are in audio. Well, no, this one is in audio. So I'm going to consume this one in audio. So yeah, I'm just kind of overwhelmed. Because when you see them physically, when you see the amount of books that you have to read physically, it just overwhelms you and I'm looking right now at one that I missed because it's so weird on my shelf hang on all right this did the rounds on booktube a few years ago this is forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma and this is about a brother and sister in a horrible situation and they fall in love what can I say it's what I, it it is what it is you know um apparently like they they don't grow up as brother and sister and and you are really rooting for them to get together which is what happens in flowers in the attic but we're not going to talk about that one because i already have a whole talk about it i'll link it up above and down below where all the links are where all the cool links hang out next up the bone season by samantha shannon i bought this on impulse when i was buying everything under the sun that seemed interesting and i thought it was a finished series and it is not a finished series i have book one two and three and um there's like nine books in this series so i want to read the first one i'm gonna give the first one a chance just to see how i like it i know it's fantasy and you all know that i don't like fantasy but um, I have high hopes. I have high hopes for this one. I think this, this is a, a fantasy book that I'm going to like. I don't know why that is. Don't ask me why. I know that this is about people that can tell the future and they're like outlawed. And there is obviously a girl that can tell, ooh, that can tell the future. That, that, that is clairvoyant, okay? And, oh, this is interesting. I didn't see this first page before. So I do have this one on audio, so... That's a good th that's a good sign that I'm gonna get to it eventually. <laughs> then we have a book that I should have read last year, and that's Elatsoe by Darcy Little Badger. And this is a beautiful book, and this is the this is a story. I wish I had this in audio. Why don't these come out in audio? First of all, a book is beautiful. But um this is the story about a little girl who can talk to animals, I believe. And whose brother, not brother, whose cousin is murdered. And she gets a visit from her cousin being like, hey, I, I, was, I didn't die. Like, I was murdered. And she has to solve the mystery. And uh, that sounds amazing. Again, the only reason I haven't got to this is because I couldn't find the audiobook anywhere. And I don't think there is an audiobook. So I'll just read the, the book. I really need to fall back in love with reading physical copies of books. Because this is just not... <laughs> I cannot just rely on audiobooks. I mean, I could, but I have books that are not an audiobook that I really want to get to. So I really need to fall back in love with reading physical books. I do want to read A Little Life by Hanya. I forgot the last name, so I'll insert it here. Um, but um, but I, I don't think I'm ready for that. <laughs> I don't think my anxious brain can take it. But we do have On Earth, We're Briefly Young, a novel by Ocean, Ocean Vong. This is basically this story about a man who is queer and he's writing letters to his illiterate, illiterate mother 
telling him about his queerness. I think this book is amazing. I think it's going to pack quite a punch and yeah. Again, haven't read it because I haven't found the audio, but I think this one might be a good cozy read. Like I, I, I do like the idea of reading physical books. It's just my attention span is everywhere. And then when I'm reading and I've read like, for example, this one, 50 pages and I see that I still have this much to go. It like really messes with my perception of I'm never gonna get this done. So that's why I have stayed away from reading physical books. Then we get to this one and I do have this one in audio and this is Light from Distant Stars and I bought this thinking that it was a um, kind of like a science fiction-y book. It is not a science fiction book. This is basically um, the story of a murder and those that are involved and it's a story about grief and it's a story about accepting um that your parents possibly aren't the best people or like not that they're not the best people but that they are people and that they make mistakes loads of mistakes really bad ones so um yeah this is like from this one starts i this is one that i'm not so excited about i'm gonna be honest <laughs> we're down to the we're down to the nitty gritty. Let's do Shirley Jackson. Shirley Jackson Dark Tales. Uh, the only reason I haven't read this one is because it's short stories. <laughs> That's it. I love Shirley Jackson. She makes me feel stupid when she writes. Like I'm like, oh my god, that was so beautiful. What the fuck happened? Uh, but yeah, I love her anyway. Uh, thank you, Shirley Jackson, for reminding me that I am not as smart as I think I am. And I really want to read your books. There's that. And then we have um, Snow Country by Yasunari Kawabata. I don't know what this story is about. She said, let, let, let me read the back. Mamura is tired of the bustling city. He takes the train to the snow, through the snow, to the mountains of the west coast of Japan to meet with a geisha he believes he loves. Beautiful and innocent Komako is tightly bound by the rules of, of a rural geisha and lives a life of servitude and seclusion that is alien to Shimamura. Their love offers no freedom to either of them. That sounds really sad, but it sounds also really good. Now, I said I wasn't going to include rereads in this, but I had to include one because I really, really want to reread this in the year 2022 because it's been years since I read it and I remember reading it and loving it, and that is Rosemary's Baby by Ara Levin. Levine. If you don't know what this is, about this is about a woman that gets pregnant with the antichrist and she doesn't know it and she lives next to a cult a cult called upon satan to impregnate her and and it's a mess it's crazy it's a mess um it's really trippy though um uh i really like it if you know you know the ending so that ending though that ending two mary watson books because of course i bought two mary watson books without even knowing if i liked mary watson because i was doing that whole thing where i wanted to haul ten thousand books per month which you can't do anymore because your girl got a new job and that pays less but it's better for her mental health so no more book hauling but anyway i have the wicker light which is about a girl or a woman that loses her sister and she believes that there's more to the story that the police are saying and there might be magic involved and then the other one is about um a girl that is chased through the forest in a warped version of a childhood game. The boy who hunt her are judges, powerful and frightening pursuers, who know nothing of her true identity. If they knew she was an auger, their sworn enemy, the game would turn deadly. I mean, it sounds amazing. I just haven't gotten to it. I do have them in audio though. And the final two books. I want to give Jamaica in another try because my girl... Daphne du Maurier deserves it. I want to finish this one because this is the last Daphne du Maurier book. Is it? Is it? No, I also have The Loving Spirit. I didn't include The Loving Spirit. Oh my god. So I have The Loving Spirit and I have Jamaican Inn. I don't know what The Loving Spirit is about and I do know that Jamaica Inn is about an inn where nefarious things may take place. I want to read them both so that I can read all the Daphne du Maurier on my shelf. And last for certainly not least, we have 
E.M. Forrester Maurice, which I will read for a book to movie adaptation project because there's a movie about it. Oh my gosh, I forgot one. Hang on. I keep forgetting books. <laughs> this video is a mess. I'm so sorry. But yeah, the last one, The Wife by Meg Wolitzer. I also have this in the audio and I plan to listen to it and do a book to movie adaptation project on it. So I will read the book, watch the movie, and tell you my thoughts and which one you should do. Read the book or watch the movie. That's it guys. That's all I have for you. I'm gonna leave these books out in a pile because I think that if I see them, I'm more likely to pick them up than if they were in the shelves, hiding away from me as it were. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have bored you for long enough. So the last thing I have to do is bid you adieu. Thank you so much for coming. Please leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell, you know all the drill. And if you leave me a comment with a book that you most would like for me to read, I would really appreciate that. But without anything left to say, I say I will see you in another galaxy far, far away.